Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel, and welcome to all the new people, which is a lot of you, because I recently, if you don't know, went from like 300-something subscribers to 4,000-something subscribers, which is really just amazing. So I just really hope you guys enjoy this video and enjoy all the videos coming up. The most popular girls in school, usually abbreviated to MPGIS, is a stop-motion YouTube series originally aimed at men, which attracted a huge audience of teenage girls, young women, and young gay men. Not surprising, as even though the show is foul and disgusting, it stars primarily female characters portrayed by Barbie doll. As the name suggests, the show centers around various groups of popular students. Mainly the cheerleaders, the Van Burens, the football team, and Deandra, who bounces back and forth between all these groups. The seasonal arcs all have to do with gaining and maintaining levels of popularity, something the characters take very seriously. In this essay, we are going to look at how MPGIS deconstructs teen movies and shows and their various tropes and characters. Teenage girls in popular culture are usually not portrayed in the most sympathetic light even in media aimed at teen girls. We tend to find the same tropes of the Queen Bee of the group and her underlings, or, other times, the Queen Bee and her posse are the villains and our teen girl protagonist is more down-to-earth but perhaps still ultimately strives for acceptance from this group or popularity of her own. For some reason, in teen movies and shows, teenage girls are very concerned with popularity. And also, for some reason, Popularity is not really how it is in real life, having a lot of friends and being a social butterfly, but it's more like being a celebrity. What gets especially confusing is when the character is portrayed as hated by not just our protagonist and her friends, but by everybody, thus making her popularity seem more like an attitude than a fact. Rarer are the films and shows that focus directly on this group of girls, and when you do get them, they are usually even more evil, like in Jawbreaker or Heathers, and to a lesser extent, Mean Girls. But as villains to the protagonist, they are more tame. The conflict usually comes in the form of prank wars, blackmail, competitions, being forced to work together, etc. A popular trope among these shows is that the main character and the Queen Bee were friends at some point, but had a falling out. If they eventually do make up, it of course has to be kept quiet because of the social structure. You may occasionally, like in the case with Saved by the Bell, Sixteen, or the various incarnations of Archie, get shows with a gender-balanced group of friends. These shows, though, because they are aimed at boys and girls, tend to be less obsessed with popularity. This is strictly a girls' show thing. But why? Why do writers think that teenage girls are so obsessed with popularity? Certainly, teenage girls have a reputation for being mean. They supposedly bully through mean words and rumors, though I had plenty of female friends in high school who got the absolute shit beat out of them, and vice versa. But why popularity in particular? Well, first we have to answer what popularity means in these shows. As we've established, it is not the ordinary definition of the word. Popularity here comes with a lot of things girls typically like. Fashion, glamour, cheerleading, cute boys, and of course, getting away with being mean. This is the way popularity is inherently coded with femaleness in these stories. This is portrayed in MPGIS with the popular girls constantly fighting and the popular boys being nothing but friendly to each other. The boys are pretty much angels in this series, with the girls being so evil they've ripped off a girl's arms, burned down malls and cars, committed kidnappings, and straight-up murder. Elizabeth Beth Morowitz and Dana E. Mastro in their paper, Mean Girls, The Influence of Teen Movies on Emerging Adults, discuss the ideas of social aggression versus physical aggression. Female characters in the 90 popular teen movies they assessed were far more likely to engage in social aggression, such as note passing, rumor spreading, silent treatments, and so forth. MPGIS shows us numerous examples of social aggression. In season 1, two groups of mean girls, the cheerleaders and the Van Burens, are attempting to claim dominance over the school. This is accomplished through control over territory, in this case, bathrooms. In the first episode, it is established that the cheerleaders have control over the girls' bathroom when Deandra tries to use it. However, Shay Van Buren and her friends soon gain control of this bathroom. 
But territorial disputes are not the only form of social aggression seen in Season 1. In terms of the rivalry between the two groups of popular girls, we also have rumor spreading and threats to do so, and attempts to gain various allies in their pointless war. Of course, both sides are only ever able to recruit Deandra. Within the groups themselves, we also see clear hierarchies. With the cheerleaders, it's very obvious. Mackenzie is the leader, Brittany is second in command, but Mackenzie is quick to remind her of her place. Trisha is third. The three of them are in charge of the rest of the cheerleaders, who are good for numbers but are pretty inconsequential, which becomes even more apparent as the series progresses. With the Van Burens, it's obvious Cameron is the leader. At first it seems Michaela is on the bottom, but it soon becomes apparent that it's really Shay who is on the bottom of the Van Buren sisters. However, even though Cameron and Michaela show up at the high school a few times throughout season one, Cameron is in college and Michaela is in elementary school, so the sisters aren't really a powerful clique at school since Cameron's graduation. Shay's at-school girl group consists of Saison Marguerite and sometimes Deandra. Unlike the cheerleaders, Shay seems to regard them more as equals, unlike Mackenzie. Brittany and Mackenzie are best friends, though spend more screen time at each other's throats throughout the series. Shay and Saison are also best friends and have never turned against each other. Of course, that does not mean that these two are nice to anybody else. Deandra is also completely self-centered. Remember when I said that popularity on these shows is often treated more as being an elitist than actually being well-liked? Well, that concept is satirized with the character Amberlynn Wegger. Amberlynn is not part of any popular crowd, though she is well-known at school because everyone likes her so much. They regard her as a sweetheart, oozing with kindness, perhaps making her the true most popular girl. MPGIS is very much a deconstruction of popular high school tropes, so it should come as no surprise that there are a ton of character tropes that are played with. Mackenzie is the alpha bitch. If you don't know, the alpha bitch, or the queen bee, is one of the most overused character types in high school based media, especially stuff aimed at girls. She's the leader of the popular crowd. Examples include Regina George, Kate Saunders, Sincerity, and Bonnie Rockweiler. Mackenzie, of course, takes things further than most, being a total power junkie, always in the middle of an elaborate scheme to maintain popularity. She goes as far as to have Jenna Darabont sent to prison as revenge for trying to bring hipsterism to the school, thus making the cheerleaders no longer cool. And during this plan, she also betrays her best friend Brittany because it's all for the greater good, i.e. social status, the most important thing in her life, hands down. Another popular high school trope played with here is the fallen princess. The fallen princess was once herself in the popular crowd, but has somehow fallen out of the crowd. Well-known examples include Veronica Lodge in Riverdale, Allison from Braceface, and Caitlin from Sixteen. Here, our fallen princesses are Shay Van Buren and Deandra. Both of these characters have insane backstories. In the case of Shay, it points out how ridiculous this trope can be. She was destined to be head cheerleader like her older sister, mother, and grandmother before her. For some reason I have yet to understand, in this show's universe, the captain of the high school cheerleading squad is chosen in the third grade. Deandra was also a cheer captain, because as we all know, popular girls in fiction have to, have to, have to be cheerleaders. Deandra's backstory, though, is different than Shay's. It points out how minute the initial incident for the fallen princess often is. Caitlin was outcast for getting a job, with a silly uniform, mind you. Allison is kicked out of the clique for making friends with people Nina doesn't like. Regina George wears sweatpants on the wrong day. Deandra, on the other hand, as I gazed out over my kingdom of popularity, the Mountain Dew and corn dogs coalesced with the pastrami quesadilla I had for lunch somewhere in my lower intestine. Ignited by the pop rocks, I had what we in the IBS community call a whoopsie poopsie. You know, shitting on your entire cheer squad is probably going to make you an outcast a, a lot easier in real life than any of those other examples. Shay is always trying to compete with the cheerleaders and prove that she's still popular and beautiful even if she's not on the squad. She even briefly gets to be head cheerleader, though she seems to always wind up back on the bottom. In season 5, she is totally left out of the modeling team, much to her displeasure. She is rejected in favor of her sister, tries to join, tries to become their coach later on when they need one, but is always turned away. Deandra, on the other hand, 
despite being an ex-alpha bitch herself, is not concerned with popularity much anymore. At least it seems. She was still very excited to be nominated for prom queen and equally happy to become a popular singer. Still, she is mainly motivated by food and will join up with anyone to get it. She's probably the nicest female character on the show, though her bitchy side does come to light more than a few times. Most notably, when she teamed up with Jenna Daffananian to produce music and ended up treating her bandmates, Rachel and Judith, like total garbage. Perhaps Deandra can be considered on the popular side at Overland Park, being friends with Shay Van Buren, having briefly been on the cheer squad and the football team, and being a part of the USA modeling team. She's very different than the popular girl archetypes we see in media and the exaggerated ones we see on MPGIS. She dresses very girly, but she's not at all concerned with fashion. She doesn't even bother getting a prom dress when she's nominated for prom queen. She also does not concern herself with who she hangs out with. She talks openly about her pooping habits. She is not up to date on anything actually relevant or cool, making only very dated references if she ever references media at all. I mean, of course, those are all reasons why she's such a popular character and why the show's fanbase of young women love her so much. But she is certainly not a character you would see in a typical high school drama or even comedy. This is all mainly due to the fact that, as a character, Deandra is really just Carlo Moss, her voice actor and one of the co-creators of the show, transplanted into the body of a beautiful teenage girl. But you know, it turns out that a hot blonde ex-cheerleader with a robot arm and the personality of a 30-something year old man is a pretty unique character. The final trope the show plays with that I want to talk about is a little less widely known and widely used. It's the gay guy seeks popular jock trope. It's more common in drama than comedy. It's exactly what it sounds like from the name. A gay character, either out or closeted, is in love with or attracted to a popular jock. Examples include Patrick from The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Kurt from Glee, and Kevin Keller from Riverdale. Most Popular Girls in School, however, has a much more interesting spin on it than any of these examples. Fan is probably one of the best characters on the show for multiple reasons. Now, Fan for a large part of the series is in denial about the fact that he is gay. He often spies on the football team in the locker room and has delusions that every boy in school wants to have sex with him, they just don't know it yet. He has a total, maybe even subconscious crush on Tanner Christensen. Tanner is a popular jock who also happens to be gay. Later on, when Fan does come to terms with his sexuality, he thinks this is the reason everyone hates him and doesn't understand why they accept Tanner. He has no clue that he's disliked because he's an asshole. Oh, I get it, guys. Hayes the gay guy. Real classy. Jonathan, I'm gay. We know, Tanner. Does everything have to be about you? Fan is a social outcast with no friends, and he becomes obsessed with the popular and well-liked Tanner, the only other gay guy in school. Fan wants both to be with him and to be him. Tanner's sexuality is totally inconsequential to how his friends view him. Fan, though, is absolutely terrified of his own sexuality. Even after briefly coming out, he steps back into the closet. Then, after finding out what bisexuality is, he tries to pass himself off as bi, though it's clear to everyone around him he has no attraction to women whatsoever. Fan, of course, will never realize it's his personality that makes people not like him, because he thinks he's the epitome of cool and remarkably funny. So he's looking to Tanner and thinking, why? Why is he gay and everyone loves him, but they all hate me for being gay? He's so attractive. I'm the other gay guy at school. I'm the one who deserves to be with him. It's not fair that he's with someone else. It should be me. It takes this trope of what is usually an innocent crush or a secret attraction from an innocent character and turns it into an obsession rooted entirely in vanity. And Fan is just a fascinating character for more reasons than that, but that's a good one, let me tell you. MPGIS has dozens more examples of deconstructing or commenting on popular tropes on high school settings. The show itself obviously has other qualities, but that was what I mainly wanted to focus on, so if you haven't seen MPGIS, I strongly suggest you check it out. Okay, so that's my essay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also... I recently passed my thousand subscriber um, milestone, which is like insane to me because like, um, but so I'm think um, I think I'm gonna be doing a live stream to celebrate that coming up. So look for that. 
and I will see you all next time.